How to install mods for Apexel Skyblock? That's a question I've been asked multiple times in the past. So today we want to talk about how to set up mods, what mods you even need, what launcher you should use, and why you should use mods over clients like Badline or Luna. But before we dive into the video, if you haven't done already, a sub to the channel would be amazing, as I'm in a battle for YouTube rank versus Candy Pad and Vid, and you can be a part of this journey. Anyways, let's start with the video. First off, I want to talk about the mods I personally use, and give you a brief introduction of what they are doing. I can't go too much into detail, otherwise this video would be multiple hours long. But if I should make videos about different mods and go more in depth, let me know in the comments. The mods I use are the following. APEC, Crash Patch, Chat Triggers, Denka Skyblock Mod, Not Enough Updates, Optifine, Patcher, Simple Toggle Sprint, Skyblock Addons, Skyblock Extras, Sky Honey, Sky Tilts and Water Solver. You can find official downloads on my Discord and the FAQ channel. We won't provide the download links themselves, but links to the official sources like Discords or Githubs. Whenever you download the mod, make sure it's from official sources. Otherwise, they can contain a so-called red, so you give someone else access to your account. A video about what reds are, how to avoid them and what to do when you got redded will be done in the future. Now for a quick overview of what the mods are doing. APEC is made to change your GUI, so you've got the bar at the bottom for example. It is accessible via slash APEC. Crash patch is used so if your game would crash, it tries to avoid the crash and just disable the crashing function or mod. It already saved me some nucleus lobbies or dungeon runs. Chat triggers itself doesn't provide you any functions, but it allows you to use chat triggers modules. The approved modules can be imported with slash ct import module name. I say approved on purpose because the importable modules are checked by the chat triggers team to make sure they are in line with Hypixel's rules of playing Skyblock. One exception to this is Volk Addons, it can be found on the respective GitHub. You can explore the accepted modules on the chat triggers website, link is in the description. Most of DSM's functions are included in other mods these days, but the particular function I am using is Fix Drill Animation Reset. Even though I couldn't fully test it yet, in theory it should help with the issue hyping players have with mining. It's accessible via slash DSM. Next up we have Not Enough Updates or NEU for short. NEU is one of the best mods for Skyblock, including a lot of quality of life things like the storage overlay. It's accessible via slash NEU. Optifine is one of the most used mods in the world and should be named to nearly everyone. It simply improves your FPS. Patcher is made to also improve your FPS in game. I'll do a video about how to improve your FPS in the future. It is accessible via slash patcher. I use simple toggle sprint everywhere besides farming. The mod also includes an allowed version of toggle sneak because you're only sneaking while you're not in the GUI. You can open the settings via slash toggle sprint. Next up we have the OG Skyblock mod, Skyblock Addons. Even though a lot of its functions are implemented in other mods these days, and some of its functions are broken, in my opinion it's still worth to have SBA in your mods folder. There are a few functions that didn't get replaced and you can always use it as a backup. You can open it, you guessed it, with slash SBA. Now we talk about the only paid mod on the list, which is SBE. It also includes a lot of functions, most of which are replaceable with other mods these days. So you can get it if you want to, but you don't have to. To open it, you have to use slash SBE. Skyhoney is one of the newest mods on this list, but that's rather a good than a bad thing, because it's getting updated very frequently. It's not just your number one mod when it comes to farming, but it also provides a lot of functions for basically everything. You do need NEU for it to work, and you can open its settings with slash SH. Now we talk about sky tilts, openable with slash st. Just like some of the other mods, sky tilts also add some more functions to your game. For example hotkeys, but also a way to disable the messages from a wither impact weapon and much more. Lastly, water solver is a mod made for the dungeon's water puzzle. Now that we know what mods we want to use, we have to decide how we want to install and start them. For some people it's enough to use a normal Minecraft launcher, but in my opinion it's kinda clunky and limited in its functions. This is where third party launchers come in handy. First off, do not use Feather Client. You can find a full list of why you shouldn't use it in the description. But one of the main reasons is, Feather is breaking some mods. So if you use it and you are having an issue with the mod, good luck in the support channel. They won't help you with it, because the reason is on Feather's side. Launchers you can actually use are MultiMC, Prism Launcher, GD Launcher or Modrinth. While all of them are still unique in their own way, all of them provide one very useful function for us. They allow us to install Forge easily. I'm personally using MultiMC, so I will go on with it from this point on. But feel free to use whatever fits you most. 
Before we can start the process of setting something up, you have to install Java 8 64 bit. You can find the download link in the description. Now download MultiMC and you will get a zip file. Put the folder that's inside the zip file wherever you want and open the MultiMC executable. If it's a first startup, you have to select the language you want to use, followed by the Java version. Since we are mostly using it for Minecraft 1.8.9, select Java 1.8.0 with Architecture 64 in this window. In most cases, the correct version has a yellow star next to it. In this window, you can already set the RAM if you want to, but you can always do it later on anyways. I would set it to at least 4GB. In MultiMC, the first thing you want to do is add your account. To do so, go to the top right corner and click on Manage Accounts. Over here you want to add the Microsoft account. Follow all of the upcoming steps and pause this video until you're done. Now we want to create a new instance. Click on Add Instance, give it a name you like, select version 1.8.9 and click OK. Now click on Edit Instance and in the tab Version, click on Install Forge and OK. Now click on Launch and start the instance once. Once it's started, you can instantly close it again. If you now click on Minecraft folder, it should open your .minecraft folder. In there, look for a folder called mods and put all of the mods you want to use in that folder. Congrats, you're done and have mods installed. Pretty simple, no? But why should you use this instead of a client? While I can't deny the fact of clients being even simpler to set up, they also come with a bunch of downsides. First, they are slow. I'm not talking about FPS as such, but they are slow in terms of updates. By the time I'm recording this, Badline still hasn't released any major updates for Garden, even though it was released in February of 2023. With Forge and Mods, you're always up to date, since developers like Honeyball from Sky Honey try to release updates as fast as possible after an update. Also, the customizability is very limited on clients. You're limited to the features they provide, and most of the times they are a knockoff version of the Forge implementations that were released month earlier. And before you tell me, but I get more FPS if I use Badline, I have to tell you, configure your mods properly. Especially Patcher and Optifine get you lots of FPS if you configure them properly. As mentioned earlier, I'm planning on releasing a video about FPS settings in the future, so sub to not miss it. But I also have to admit, since Supi started working for Badline, it got way better, and especially for Litec grinds, it's a viable alternative these days. So if you just play Skyblock casually or occasionally, it's okay to use Badline. But why should you, if setting up Forge takes you about 5 minutes? And now have fun grinding, and I'll see you in the next one.